but I think we should talk with the new big smartphones that got announced from Samsung. So let's jump into Unpacked, shall we? Mm. Yeah. So uh, Galaxy S24 series is the main thing. There was also briefly a, a, a teaser for a ring. Very a smart ring, like a three second animation of a circle on the screen. Uh huh. And uh, that was basically all we got. Yeah. Is Samsung uh, expecting us to just like forget about the Bixby speaker or like just pretend <laughs> yes. that never got <laughs> announced at all? I guess that's never happening, but yeah. you know, they're working on something new and that's a ring. And I'm just going to put that to the side because we don't know anything about it. Uh -huh. No date, no price, no release, no features, no nothing. But we do have the phones S24, S24 Plus, and S24 Ultra. The easy take is, wow, they look the same as last year. But the second you look further into what they do, there is a lot there. So I'll just like I'll just go super high level, then we can dive into maybe some mm -hmm. more interesting stuff. So the phones start at eight hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, and thirteen hundred dollars respectively. Uh, all of the screens are totally flat with no curved edges, and they're all slightly uh, thinner bezels. Um, I'm really happy about the totally flat ultra. Yes. Um, they are. Running Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 across the board. They have 2,600 nit displays across the board. And actually, the Plus phone got upgraded to Quad HD as well. Wait, real quick. Yeah. Is there an Exynos version? Not that no. we've been talked about. There wasn't one last year either. There wasn't one at all. No, they okay. got yeah, it. All new Snapdragon. Yeah. And the edges of all these phones are all very much more flat. The Ultra has this new titanium rail material. I wonder where mm -hmm. I've heard that before. Um, mm. But <laughs> there is also... Apple invented titanium. Yeah, of course. <laughs> that's that's what we're all on the same page about. Uh, but no, we, we get these super flat sides with the S24 and Plus that look exactly like the iPhone. And I didn't want to say it in the video because sometimes people you say that just too freely. Oh, they copied the iPhone. It looks yeah. just like the iPhone. But then you hold up the phone and look at it from the side and it... It looks exactly yeah. like the iPhone. Besides the camera, the the camera is the only thing that differentiates. Yeah, I'm just it. talking about the sides. Yeah, the way they handle the sides. Yeah, yeah. It's just like the iPhone. Fine, cool. Uh, new it colors. It looks great. It looks. It I feels love it. Really good. Yeah. I was happy about the square sides of the iPhone when they did that, and mm -hmm. I'm happy about these. Um, but most of the changes, most of the new interesting features with this phone, as predicted from the last Snapdragon Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 phone that I reviewed are in the software department and a lot of them are AI related and they're really quite interesting. I'm particularly happy for Google of just like getting rid of their pixel division and uh, <laughs> merging with Samsung. It really felt very googly that presentation. Did, I mean, yeah. from the presentation, the stuff they talked about, the actual phones and the hardware was minimal. That was a software presentation. That yeah. that felt like Google I.O. Yeah, and did. then <laughs> like here's this S24 lineup yeah. in, tossed in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of good Google stuff. Uh, let's start with the real-time voice translations, because that's where they started, too. I got to try this, and honestly, it seemed like it worked really well. Basically, you get on the phone, you have a downloaded voice pack. It's like a language pack. It's like one to 500 megabytes for a language. You download it before the phone call, and then it will give you a live voice transcription of what the person's saying to you in whatever language. So let's say you download the Korean pack. You call someone. They're speaking Korean. They say what they want to say in Korean. You hear an English voice saying what they were saying. Then you talk back to them in English, if, assuming you speak English, mm -hmm. and it voices what you said back to them in Korean. Right. And it was smooth, and it looked like it worked really well. I thought that was pretty cool. And just confirming, it is waiting till the entire thing that is said is finished and then starting the translation? Uh somewhat if you pause it will start talking okay mm -hmm. um and can you continue offer. to talk during because like yeah one there are going to be people i understand if you're doing very quick questions like one to two sentences pause translation pause but that's a very cut and dry like good sample or like oh, yeah. experiment yeah. for it but that's not how conversations work. there's also two options on the phone you can have them hear your voice and then hear the translation mm -hmm. or you can just have them not hear your voice at all and only hear the translation so there's just very long pauses there's just long pauses between yeah. okay so you either hear double of everything sort of in, in two, two different, different languages, languages or you hear pause and then the translation. Which the double of everything is what we're kind of used to when we see I'd presentations find... with people in other languages but yeah i don't know how people are going to feel about that over the phone but. It's every conversation is going to take twice as long. Yeah, <laughs> but if you can understand it, I'm fine with that. I just wonder if somebody is talking for like five straight minutes, hmm. 
how does the translation aspect or is that this not what that's they said keep in touch with your friend so i'm assuming that means a phone call where you actually have a conversation with somebody yeah i like the stress test that yeah Yeah. i don't i think they tried to come up with real world examples i think it's a useful tool i just don't have that many conversations with people who do not speak a single word of english right i don't Mm -hmm. think catching up with my friends involves yes that level of translation usually yeah, yeah. so it, it's probably more like i am in a foreign country or i'm calling someone who i've never called before and i just need them to understand what i'm asking for yeah that type i agree of thing. yeah so it's, it's just convenient for that it feels way more like a tool like you said not yeah. not like not for fun not for yeah if you were probably really good friends with somebody and catching up with them you probably understand certain amounts of language exactly. to communicate with them in that process yeah uh, yeah they leaned into the translation stuff a lot. Um, I think Transformers are actually specifically good at translation uh, because of the context understanding. And they showed off that translation app that is basically Google Translate almost yeah. exactly, except it has a different UI. And it actually is, it looked fairly smart. It shows, like, it has your UI on one side, and then it flips the Upside. UI for the other person. So it's sort of like what Google is doing with the Pixel Fold, where there's a UI on, <laughs> on the, other the other screen. But yeah. I feel like this is more natural. Yeah, I'm also always, for for some reason, live translation, and we have to get there eventually, but has felt like the kiss of death on some products in the last five years. Remember the OG Pixel Buds were like, their whole thing was, yeah, it's going to live translate in your ear. Yeah. Yeah. That was dead. Did the Surface Mm. not also have a fold over? And maybe I'm wrong on that one, but I I feel like we've heard about live translations for a very long time and have not. Yeah. You also have to really define see. live, you know? Fair. <laughs> it's fair. like, <laughs> yeah. if if the other person could speak and in real time it was able to translate their voice in their voice, then that would, I would that consider would be, live translation. Uh, wild. And I feel like they could get to that point at some point. Because if, yeah. it ha- if there's an AI voice map of you, which like Apple is already letting you do, Time then being do. able to overlay that over what you're saying should be not that big of a leap. So maybe in the next yeah. few years... Maybe. Going out, not coming in, though, because then you would have to download the voice map of every single person you ever talked to. Sure. Yeah. It would be like, yeah. It would. The, but either way. Every person would have to have their own voice map. Yeah. Which maybe they you have them do that during setup or when you're doing the Hey Google thing, it just maps your voice from there. Hmm. Sorry, everyone who's phone's oh, just lit up. Yeah. Uh, you're usually really good at saying, uh, hey, G, instead. <laughs> also, I'm usually the one messing it up. But <laughs> everyone yell at David today. Your phone's I, I know. I, Adam, just bleep it. Just bleep just, it. <laughs> I pushed that conversation possibly too far. I think it's a cool tool if it works. I'm like, I hope it works because I'm waiting for the one that seems like it works very well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Something I think we'll probably use a little bit more is uh, some of the, I mean, there's a couple other things like the Notes app can straighten up your handwriting and the new voice uh, voice memos. What is it called? It's the voice recorder app. Transcripts yeah, like, does a lot of the same app. stuff Google's does now. Yeah. It has yeah. speaker, individual speaker detection. It can summarize mm-hmm. it, all that sort of stuff. Google's done since like the Pixel 4. Lot, yeah, <laughs> lots of that stuff. Yeah. The I think there's notes. I just want to go notes before you okay. get past it. There was the like note formatting, like AI to note format and note summarize. So like if you just similar to like probably what we do at a lot of these events, you're just typing everything you see really fast, but then it can give you headers and bullet points based on everything you type and just organize it out better. I actually I'm think a bullet that's point kind of man, nice. so I do like that. Yeah. yeah. That would, I mean, writing the podcast every week, and then if it could do that for me, it would actually make my life yeah, way you easier. you just got to set up the phone right next to the computer, just <laughs> let it listen to the keynote, and then hit summarize. Yeah. Boom. Easy. <laughs> no, yeah. then, but the big things I think are, are like photo editing and Google search mm-hmm. on this phone. Uh, the Google, the, the photo editing is very Google like it, rem- it looks just like the pixel. Yeah. So there's some photo editing features where you can retouch a photo, you can remove reflections, you can fix shadows, things like that. That's in the regular editor. And then there's a magic editor button with the little stars that looks exactly like the Pixel's magic editor where you click it. But the and it logo goes, is different. That's the weird a thing. A slightly different logo. It yeah. It feels like it's using, like, this is probably using the Snapdragon Gen 3 mm-hmm. technology because most of the changes from Je- Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 to Gen 3 were just AI ML stuff. Exactly. So it's very strange that Samsung's interweaving all of these, like, Google branded features with things that Google also does with tensor but it's branding it as galaxy ai yeah it's just awkward it is kind of strange yeah it did feel like there's a ton of google stuff they could have just said it was magic editor like they already do all the stuff with google but maybe they want to keep that they want it to be a samsung feeling thing i guess but Yeah. yeah you can literally do the same exact thing that you can on the pixel which is 
Actually, maybe even more. Yeah. You can circle a subject, move it around a frame, erase the background, erase the whatever you want, and it, it edits the photo for you. It adds a tiny AI-generated indicator watermark to the bottom left corner, which you can then erase with AI. <laughs> Just point that out. That Wait, can you actually another watermark in the same oh, place? Tr true. <laughs> That's true. But you could just crop it. You can crop it. You <laughs> could just crop it. Um, yeah. But yeah, you can. The magic editor doesn't seem to have any restrictions. I played with this for a few seconds. It it has this cool animation and it does the moving things around. I couldn't get it to trip up like I could Google's. I can get Google's to go. Mm, this is against our terms. Oh, Remember really? the, in the review video, like Google's I, trips up a lot. Yeah, it'd try to move me like up higher up, like I was jumping higher or something, and it said. Mm, uh, it wouldn't let you do and that. It wouldn't let me do that. In some of the like... things that felt like it's just straight up from the commercial, it wouldn't let me do some of that stuff. Interesting. Samsung's did not once hesitate to do anything I asked of it in the in the couple minutes that I played with it. Yeah. We'll get the phones, we'll test them more, but I just want to note that. It's interesting. But then the other thing is uh, Google Search. Google Search is better on this phone than it is on a Pixel. Is that crazy to well, say? Well, we don't... Is this... Okay, so the feature is called Circle to Search. Yeah. Yeah. Is it exclusive to Samsung phones for now? I think they never said it is exclusively on the Samsung, but they also said they brought, like, that they're partnering with Google, and then it was, like, just Google talking about it yeah. for a while, including talking about Google Cloud and Gemini. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, they were, like, together, us and Google with deep collaboration have, like, right. brought this to life. So. Mm -hmm. But I, I didn't see any of the Samsung collaboration except that it was in the Samsung keynote and on the phone. Do you want yeah. to talk about what Circle to Search is? Yeah, yeah. yeah let's, it's the coolest thing, I thought. Yeah, yeah so uh, picture your home buttons at the bottom of the screen or even the gesture bar. And you're doing something in some app. You see a frame in a video with a cool dress or you see a, a picture of something that you think is cool. All you do is you long press the home button or the gesture bar. And then this sort of a uh, sparkly UI comes up and then you just tap or search or circle whatever you want to search and you just immediately Google searched that image. So it might remind you of Google Lens. Mm -hmm. uh, it's looking at whatever's on your screen, cropping it to the way you cropped it, sending that out as a Google search and returning a search on that image for you. Mm -hmm. Super useful. It's also very fast. Yeah. Like they were showing it, it in the really presentation. Fast. It was really fast. When I was trying it in real life, it was also shockingly fast. Mm. So I thought that was cool. Yeah. Um, and it's just really convenient just being able to, instead of, you know, taking a screenshot and then uploading that screenshot to Google mm -hmm. or to Google Lens or something like that, it's you just do it on the fly. You never even leave the app. You can right. search something and then just swipe it away and it's gone. Super good. You can also ask questions about things that are on your exactly. screen, which is cool. You I can, think that's super useful. And that yeah. is Gemini Mini like at work because it's a multimodal functionality. Super good stuff. I honestly thought it was awesome. It's so simple. Like we said, it's just lens, and we were all used to taking screenshots of things online. But right. just like write in whatever app or whatever you're doing, pull it up, circle it, it yeah. searches. That's awesome. I yeah. I think that's really, really cool. I think every time there's a global functionality, it's always useful. Like on the Pixel, if you yeah. open the multitasking window, it allows you to interact with any text or image in any app mm -hmm. in the multitasking view only. <laughs> yeah. So if you're in the app itself, you can't like, there. there's text that sometimes can't be highlighted and it won't let you highlight it. But as soon as you open multitasking, you can highlight hmm. the text in that window. And so that was like a global functionality that they added to Pixel, to, to Android, like probably 12 or 13. And so having um, more global functionality where it's like opening a sub a sub window that's doing the Google search for you on anything that you circle yeah. is like very cool. And also the key is it's only what you're circling. Yeah. So do you remember Google Now on Tap? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. That's so Google Now on it. Tap on like the Pixel 4 or 5 or whatever it was, <sighs> Yeah, they got rid of you it. basically, I think it was the same thing. You Yeah, you long press the home button and it takes everything on your screen and it pulls up some cards for you to like Google search or further explore whatever's on your screen. Yeah. So if you have a picture or you're standing in front of a statue or you have a picture of a statue and you long press home, it'll show you where the statue might be. Maybe a Wikipedia article, maybe a YouTube video about it, but it's just everything on your screen. This is an even better version of that. You just you would just circle the statue and it would show you exactly what you wanted to know about that statue yeah. without interrupting whatever app you're in, whether it's a browser or the gallery or whatever. I think it's pretty sick. Can mm -hmm. I say something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I really wanted to do a trivia question about the statues in the Unpacked thing because I thought that'd be funny. Mm. And uh, none of them were real statues. No. But I learned <laughs> that by trying to Google Lens each one of them to see. And it was just like, bro, I can't find anything. <laughs> I, I have to say, I think... 
in the event, one of the ways they were talking about like the some of these features and the camera zooms was that someone was in like an art gallery and they were taking photos of a lot of things. But I realized all the things they were editing were not actual paintings because I'm sure they didn't want to make any changes to real paintings and disrupt, not even just copyrighted, but like take away from the artist or anything like that. So that's not surprising now that all of the statues. No, 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 no. the paintings were real paintings. Not all of them. Not, not the ones them. where they did like AI changing to things. Oh, like there was, was Yeah, like they had the Mona Lisa and they had a couple talking in the beginning, yeah, but the all t- they did was make them talk. Yeah, the talking ones were The real. things they edited, yeah. Somebody right. here was okay. like, why are they editing yeah, yeah, yeah. that? And I was like, I'm pretty sure that is a painting that they made specifically for this to not yeah. st- disrespect What the Mona anything. Lisa look like? It was yeah, expanded yeah. What if we percent. What if we threw the clarity slider up on the Mona Lisa? That's... <laughs> yeah. Remaster the Mona Lisa with my Samsung Galaxy <laughs> yeah. S24 Ultra. Yeah. It's better yeah. than the original. <laughs> no, it's they're they're powerful phones. They have a lot of really solid features. Yeah, they also had this uh, Android Auto feature that I oh, couldn't tell yes. if that was exclusive or not either. Yeah, it felt so. really it weird little... to showcase in a Samsung event because they didn't show the phone because it's that was like One yeah. UI but on your Android Auto screen. It yeah. looked different from the normal Android Auto. It looked like a Samsung version of it just for this phone so is that their version of doing what carplay does where it gets mapped to your car except it gets mapped to your phone it's just to your phone yeah i guess so there was a feature in there i did really like which is if you are navigating somewhere and you get a text message from someone that you know has an address when it reads it out loud one of the buttons will be a navigate button because like in android auto it'll only voice text out loud Mm -hmm. and then you can't copy that into like your Google Maps, but this time you just hit a button, you know the text has a new address, like if you were to change an address on me, and I just press one button and I'm navigating. It definitely feels like Google's approach to being in your car is your phone is the central hub of everything, and Apple is sort of like, "Mm, maybe CarPlay is in the car itself? (laughs) Maybe we make a car? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Other than that, you know, a couple minor other updates. I, actually, okay. Batteries are bigger, slightly. Yeah. Uh, at least in the smaller S24 and S24 Plus. Yeah. The screen size is, like we said, just a little bit bigger. Uh, seven years of security updates. Right. And nice. seven generations of Android Software updates. Right. Yeah. Nice. Pretty yeah. impressive. This feels, Super again, impressive. the more I think about this, the more it kind of feels like the, the iPhone of Android type thing that I've probably said like a year or two ago about Samsung flagship phones, which is they have the most software updates of any Android phone. They feel like they have the most features. They have more Google features than some of the Google phones at this point, although they don't have like call screening and some of the Pixel exclusive stuff. Um, they might not call it night site, but they sure do have nightography. nightography like, they have just as many buzzword worthy uh, features. And then of course, there's just more hardware options. You can get an ultra phone with a, a new 5X telephoto lens instead, instead of, of 10X, 10X yeah. but it's a 50 megapixel 5X. So you can crop into 10X zoom and uh, possibly get the same Did you see quality. Mr. Beast use it? He, he, was a, he was 100 feet in the <laughs> air, 100, bro. Well, he didn't that, use the camera 100 that feet That feastable bar looked incredible. <laughs> Incredible. Hashtag not sponsored. Well played, Hashtag Jimmy. real life scenario. Well played. I did <laughs> respect that they actually acknowledged that the 3x to 10x distance was way too big. Mm. Um, we've been talking about that for a couple years now with the Ultra phones, and they were like, yeah, you know, 3x going to 10x is kind of tight. So we decided to add a 5x 50 megapixel camera yeah. so you can crop into the center portion and still get the 10x zoom. You can still zoom all the way to 100x in case you were wondering. Yeah, you can do it. You can still do it. No one's telling you you should do it, <laughs> but you can still do it. No if one you is want to. telling you you should use the 200 megapixel mode on the main camera either. Do not yeah, do that. Don't even worry about that button. <laughs> yeah. Don't even worry <laughs> about it. <laughs> Part of the AI thing that was uh, disturbing to me that seemed like it was in Google Messages. Like, I think that Samsung now uses Google Messages by default on their phones, like a skinned version of it. Uh, yes, the app. Slightly. I think it's mostly just Google Messages. Um, yeah, with like a little sheen over the top yeah yeah aesthetically anyway but they had like a you could change the tone of a message to map match a specific vibe that was in more than just messages right because couldn't because like the example they showed was something we talked about at io last year which Uh was like make the tone of this like a social post right through hashtags yeah which they also showed in this keynote yeah, okay, that's not what you're talking about. Uh, no, they had a okay, separate sorry. section for the messages, okay, yeah. but I do want to talk about that as well. Okay. <laughs> they just had a whole section that was like, do you need to write a social post but don't want to use 1% of your brain? 
type like random words <laughs> and then have it generate a social post for you. And it uses like six hashtags, which for some reason, all large language models think that social posts have to have hashtags. Even if you ask ChatGPT to write a social post, it'll add like hashtag freak out Friday, <laughs> hashtag Thursday, Thursday. That's what the brands want. OOTD, uh, O-O-T-D. Sigma grind salt. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody uses hashtags. Yeah. Also, who wants to live in a world where all of the social media that you're consuming are written by AI? That's the thing. It's kind of the same, uh, along the same lines of like GPT written blog posts. Yeah. Where eventually you have so many AI written blog posts that your AI is trained Scraping on more AI, AI blog written posts. Blog posts yeah. And it's like, okay, now we have social posts. Yeah. And yes, to me as a content creator, maybe I might want some help writing them. But now if all the social posts are AI generated, yeah. then they're going to continue to think that that's how all social posts should look. We're going to talk about something kind of related to this in e-commerce later on in the podcast, but it just reminded me of it with AI writing way too many things that we read on the internet right now. Um, But yeah, the, the, can we make an, can you make a separate Twitter profile that is just every time you tweet something, you then take that and make chat GPT, make it a social version (laughs) and have an, the alternate, AI version of Marquez oh, online. It's going to be so much worse. That would be so funny. That's already made. Someone just made it. <laughs> yeah. I'll do that so, for my yeah. subscribers on X. How about that? Uh, have you guys heard of that. dead internet theory? No. It's it's this theory that like most of the internet by the late 2010s was created mostly by bots. And so most of the things that we're consuming are just not even people. And there's like not even as there's not nearly as many people actually on the internet that are writing the stuff as we think. I would feel a lot better if that were true. I if the majority like of the stuff I was reading wasn't real people. becoming true. Yeah. Yeah. I, thought I was smart. <laughs> yes. that, was, I, that is not a real person. That is AI. Yeah. I guess so much of what I consume is videos that I don't have that issue yet. Yet. D- yet. You don't think. <laughs> Later yet. this year. Just wait. Yet. Yeah. That Will Smith eating spaghetti. <laughs> it's just hard when like if most of the content is being generated by AI and then we are having the AI summarize all of the AI generated content for us, yeah. then what are we consuming at the end of the day? Get off your phone. Everything's go a touch some grass. Everything is a remix. Go touch some AI ed- generated but grass. Wait till you finish the entirety of the waveform episode and then go touch grass. Or do it while, while listening. listening. Sure. With your new... Galaxy headphones. I don't know. There's no other products. <laughs> You're here. Ring, no yeah. Galaxy Buds. It's just the three phones. Yeah. No, that's it. It's S24, S24 Plus, and S24 Ultra. I we should be testing these phones pretty soon. Mm-hmm. I would love to try the S24 because there's. You I like think you I might really buy want. it. I yeah. think I might get it from the Zenfone Nine. I like the Zenfone a lot. I like the size of it. So I want something that is also still pretty small because I would try to like go back to my regular pixel and I feel like I'm holding a tablet after <laughs> using the Zen phone. Um, so the regular S24, but my thing is, is I'm probably the minority in this group where I like cases on a phone and there are just not enough, there are not enough, um, accessories for the Zen phone out there. And I know Samsung will have a bunch of good ones. You're about to case it up. Are we all going to case list right now? I've been caseless. That's wild. Everybody, caseless check. I mean, I'm caseless right now. Also, <laughs> wow, I've been caseless. Wow. I don't want to be. I throw. I literally. Wow. I miss just tossing my phone. Yeah. I have a terrible yeah. story. Once in, um, <laughs> once in college. <laughs> yeah, it's not that long. I was in college. I was on a video call, um, and the bed was behind me, and my bed is like in the corner of the room, and I have like basically like brick walls, and I sounds like my apartment. Had my I had a Samsung phone in my hand. And I went to look in the webcam feed to toss the phone backwards onto the bed behind me. And and so I like looked to the side. Is this I, for like, a video or something? No. Totally <laughs> you, just, you were just like, I, this sounds like a cool totally idea right now. Camera, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I tossed it over my shoulder. And because I hadn't looked, the, the wide angle distortion made it look like I had to throw a lot harder than I <laughs> did. So... I threw the phone and it went straight over the bed and slammed into the wall and then slotted down behind the bed after hitting the wall. Still didn't crack. Oh, wow. I was going to say, I remember years ago you telling me this is the first phone I, or this is only the second phone I've broken. And you didn't tell that story. Yeah, didn't But break. that's why, because it didn't it break. It was fine. I've, I, uh, j- not even that long ago, I, I went to, 
I went to catch the phone as I was dropping it, and I ended up backhanding it across the room. <laughs> Have you ever done that? <laughs> <laughs> and it's this phone. This Pixel slid across so much hardwood. It's still totally fine. Yeah. It's I appreciate totally that probably enough people listen to this that at least five people were like, I've done that before. I, I know what you're talking before. about. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've yeah. scratched my displays with keys and stuff, but I've never, I've never broken a display before. Really? Yeah, I've never I cracked a phone. Yeah, no I, I was just taking one out of the DJI Mavic controller and just pulled it open too hard and it <laughs> popped out of the USB C thing, and just slammed <laughs> on the, the pavement. Under Dang, me. that sounds like a crack. Dang. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Anyway, uh, I'm excited for the S24. <laughs> yeah. I'm legitimately yeah. excited for totally it. I fair. actually think the flat screen and the flat rails are a great design. What color are you getting? I'll put a case on it so I don't care. Huh. Are you going to upgrade from the 128 gig base? No, I probably should. Because I'm taking a million baby pictures now. Yeah, it's a lot of high res, 50 like, megapixels. Like Steve Carell in the office, where he has seven phones for all of his children. Yeah. Right there. 200 megapixel baby photo. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> AI, take this baby photo for me. No, take it in spatial videos. <laughs> <laughs> Can we say like subscribe into Google Translate and have it? Oh yeah. Say it. In say French. like and subscribe. Subscribe in French is just. Vo. 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 <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go English to. <laughs> you like French? You want? You want to hear French? Sure. I almost guarantee it's gonna sound just like that. Ready? Download French. Uh huh. Translate to French. Why is that only? Oh, okay. Done. Translate to a phone. English. Let's go to. Translate to a phone. This is an accelerating clips Sorry, outro. Taking a long time. All right, ready. Translate to a phone. Knowing the mon. Knowing the mon. Subscribe to this YouTube channel right away. Abonnez-vous immédiatement à cette chaîne YouTube. I hope there's a spike in French subscribers after this happens. <laughs> Same. <laughs>